Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. How will be thy name. How be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this night. Give us this night. A daily rest. A daily rest. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those. As we forgive those. Who trespass against us. Who trespass against us. Lead us not. Lead us not, dear Lord. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From the evil one. Sorry, I'm keeping you awake. <laughs> August 19th, Jesus is calling. I continually call you to closeness with me. I know the depth and breadth of your need for me. I can read the emptiness of your thoughts when they wander away from me. I ought for rest for your soul as well as refreshment for your mind and body. As you increasingly find fulfillment in me, other pleasures become less important. Knowing me intimately is like having a private wellspring of joy within you, in you. The spring flows freely from my throne of grace, so your joy is independent of circumstances. Waiting for my presence keeps you connected to me, aware of all that I offer you. If you feel any deficiency, you need to refocus your attention to me. This is how you trust me in the moments of your life. Psalm 131, verse 2, Psalm 1, 1 verse 6, Psalm 37, verse 7. A healing prayer for our sick loved ones. And a we have prayed for a, a lot of sick people, and believe me, they're doing well. Uh, they're getting better, and God is blessing them with this with their health. So I reach out to you all tonight that you may be one of them that get healed, or one of your loved ones get healed too. A healing prayer for all our sick loved ones. Almighty Lord, I come before your throne tonight on behalf of all the sick loved ones. Father, they are weak and their body is in pain and distressed, Lord. I pray that you have mercy on them and heal them from all these diseases. You are the Lord. You are the all-powerful one, the almighty one. There's nothing that is beyond you. So I humbly ask you, to touch them with your with your healing grace and restore them to their health. Remind them, yes, remind them of your love for them. And dear Lord, help them to trust in you. And that's the most important, to trust in you for their recovery and show them your healing power. And Lord, make them whole again. I ask this all in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. As a lasting reminder of how wicked are brought down, which is true, Ezekiel writes a lament for two of Judah's kings, 
who have been taken by Judah's oppression. It has been some 17 years since the Pharaoh Necho led King Jehoza away to captivity in Egypt. And some six years since Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar brought a subdued King Jehoiakim to Babylon. Their capture and exile are witnesses to Judah's vulnerability to God's judgment. Lament for the kings. Take up your lament concerning the princes of Israel and say, what a lioness was your mother among the lions. She lay down among them and she reared her cubs. She brought up one of her cubs and he became a strong lion. He learned to cheer and pray. He became a man eater. Nations heard about him and he was trapped in their pit. They led him with hooks to the land of Egypt. When she saw her hope unfulfilled, her expectations gone, she took another of her cubs and made him a strong lion. He prowled among the lions, for he was now a strong lion. He teared, he learned to tear the prey and became a man eater. He broke down their strongholds and devastated their towns. The land and all who were in it were terrified by his roaming. Then the nations came against him, those from regions around about. They spread their net for him. He was trapped in their pit with hooks. They pulled him into a cage and brought him to the king of Babylon. They put him in prison. So his roar was heard no more on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in your vineyard planted by the water. It was fruitful and full of branches because of abundant water. Its branches were strong for fit for the ruler's scepter it towered high above the thick foliage, conspicuous for its height and for many branches, but it was uprooted in fury, fury, fury and thrown to the ground. The east wind made it shrivel. It was stripped of its fruit. Its strong branches withered and a fire consumed them. Now it is planted in the desert in a dry and thirsty land. Fire spread from one of its main branches and consumed its fruit. No strong branch is left on it, fit for a ruler's scepter. This is a lament and is to be used as a lament. In the following year, 509 BC, God was getting chastised as Israel, citing their long history of rebellion and has repeated reluctance to bring ultimate punishment against them. Here lies Israel that they continue to be as simple as their fathers, but that the day is coming when God's chosen ones will be an obedient and holy people. History of rebelliousness. In the seventh year, in the fifth month, on the tenth day, some of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord, and they sat down in front of me. Then the Lord of War came to me, son of man, speak to the elders of Israel and say to them, This is what the Solomon Lord says. Have you come to inquire of me? I show you as I live. I will not let you inquire of me because the sovereign Lord. Will you judge them? Will you judge them, son of man? They can then confront them with the detestable practices of their ancestors and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. On the day I chose Israel, I swore with uplifted hand to the descendants of Jacob and revealed myself to them in Egypt. While uplifted hand 
I said to them, I am the Lord of God. On that day, I swore to them but I would, that I would bring them out of each other into the land. I have searched for them. Search out for them. A land full of milk and honey, the most beautiful of all lands. And I said to them, each of you, get on, get rid of the vile images you have set your eyes on. And do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they were built against me and will not listen to me. They did not get rid of the vile images they had set their eyes on, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. So I said, said I would pour out my wrath on them and spend my anger against them in Egypt. But for the sake of my name, I brought them out of Egypt. I did, did to keep my name from being profaned in the eyes of the nations among whom they lived in lived in, in whose sight I had to reveal myself to the Israelites. Therefore, I led them out of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. I gave them my decrees and made known to them my laws, by which the person who obeys them will live. Also gave them my Sabbaths as a sign between us, so they would know that I, the Lord, made them holy. Yet the people of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not follow my decrees, but rejected my laws, by which the person who obeys them will live. And then they utterly desecrated this, my Sabbath, so I said I would pour out my wrath on them and destroy them in the wilderness. But for the sake of my name, I did what I, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations, in whose sight I have brought them out. Also will uplift the hand I swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land that I had given them. A land full with milk and honey, the most beautiful of all lands. Because they rejected my laws, they did not follow my decrees, and desecrated my Sabbaths. For their hearts were devoted to their idols. Yet I looked on them with pity, and did not destroy them, or put an end to them in the, in the wilderness. I said to their children in the wilderness, Do not follow the statutes of their parents or keep the laws that they, or defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Keep my Sabbath holy that they may be a sign between us. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. But the children rebelled against me they did not follow any of my decrees. They were not careful to keep any of my laws, of which I said, The person who obeys them will live by them. And they desecrated my Sabbaths. So I said, I would pour out my wrath on them and spend my anger against them. In the wilderness. But I will tell my hand, and for the sake of my name, I did what would keep it from being profaned in the eyes of the nations, in whose sight I have brought them out also with an uplifted hand. I swore to them in the wilderness. 
that were dispersed among the nations and scattered them through the countries because they have not obeyed my laws, but have rejected my decrees and desecrated my Sabbaths. And your eyes lusted after their parents' idols. So I gave them two other statutes that were not good and laws through which they could not live. I defiled them through their gifts, the sacrifice of every firstborn, that I might fulfill them with horror so they would know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. And this also it is also your ancestors blasphemed me by being unfaithful to me. When I brought them into the land I have sworn to give them, and they saw any high hill or any leafy tree they would that they offered. The sacrifices made offerings that aroused my anger. For saying their fragrant incense and put out their drink offering, when I said to them, What is the high place you go to? It is called Bama to this day. Present and present rebelliousness. Therefore, I say to the Israelites, This is what the sovereign law says. Will you defile yourself, yourselves the way your ancestors did and lust after their vile images? When you offer your gifts, the sacrifice of your children in the fire, you continue to defile yourselves. With all your idols to this day, I am to let you inquire of me, you Israelites. Am I to let you inquire of me, you Israelites? As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I will not let you inquire at me. You say you want to be like the nations, like the people of the world, who serve wood and stone. But what do you have in mind? Will you never happen? What you have in mind will never happen, as sure as I live, declares the sovereign Lord. I will reign over you with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. With un outpoured wrath, I will bring you from the nations and gather you from the countrysides where you have been scattered. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with an outstretched arm and with outpoured wrath, I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations, and there face to face, I will execute judgment upon you, as I judged your ancestors in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So I will judge you, declares the sovereign Lord. I will take note of you as you pass under my rod, and I will bring you into bond of the covenant. I will purge you of those who revolt, revolt and rebel against me. Although I will bring them out of the land where they are living, they will not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Time of no rebellion. As for the people of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Go serve your idols, every one of you. But afterwards you will surely listen to me and no longer profane my holy name with your gifts and idols. For on my holy mountain, the high mountain of Israel, declares the sovereign Lord, there, there in the land, all the people of Israel will serve me. There I will accept them. There I will require your offerings and your choice gifts, along with all your holy sacrifices. I will accept your fragrant incense 
and I will bring you out from the nations and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered. I will, pro will be proved holy through you in the sight of the nations. Then you will know that I am the Lord. When I bring you to the land of Israel, the land I had sworn with an uplifted hand to give to your ancestors, there you will remember your conduct and all the actions by which you have defiled yourself, and you will loathe yourself for all the evil you have done. You will know that I am Lord when I deal with you for my name's sake and not according to your evil ways and your corrupt practices. You people of Israel, declares the sovereign Lord. Because of Israel's rebellion, judgment has already come against the northern tribes. And God's vengeance is po poised against Judah. Ezekiel now sees the sort of judgment coming. Ezekiel turns his face towards the south southward and brings still another pronounce pronouncement against Judah's sin. Perhaps the judgments keep coming for the simple reason that so few people believe their message as, the, as Ezekiel complains. They think he is simply bringing a nice little, par nice little parables, interesting sermons from which they derive entertainment. Hence, the picture of the sword, maybe it will get their attention. View to the homeland. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, Set your face towards the south. Preach against the south and prophesy against the forest of the southland. Say to the sudden, southern forest, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am about to set fire to you and it will consume all your trees, both green and dry. This will, the will be scorched by it. Everyone will see it, and I, the Lord, have kindled it, will not be clenched. Mm -hmm. Then I said, Sovereign Lord, they are saying to me, isn't he just telling parables? Sword of judgment. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. So you face against Jerusalem and preach against the sanctuary, prophesy against the land of Israel. And say to her, This is what the Lord says, I am against you. I will draw my sword from its sheath and cut off from you both the righteous and the wicked, because I am going to cut off the righteous and the wicked. My sword will be unsheathed against everyone from the south to the north. So that all people will know that I the Lord have drawn my sword from a sheath. It will not return again. Therefore groan, son of man, groan before them with broken heart and bitter grief. And when I, they ask you, why are you groaning, you shall say, because of the news that is coming. Every heart will melt with fear, and every hand Go in. Every spirit will become faint, and every leg will be wet with urine. It is coming. It will surely take place, declares the sovereign Lord. The word of war came to me, son of man, prophesy and say, This is what the Lord says A sword, a sword, sharpened and polished. Sharpen for the slaughter. Polish the flash like lightning. Shall we rejoice in the scepter of my royal son? The sun despise every such stick. The sword is appointed to be polished, to be grasped with the hand. It is sharpened and polished, made ready for the hand of the slayer. Cry out and wail, son of man, for it is against my people. It is against all the princes of Israel. They are thrown to the sword along with my people. Therefore, beat your breasts, testing 
will surely come. And if what you in the center of which the Lord despises does not continue, declared the sovereign Lord. So then, suddenly I prophesy, and strike your hands together. Let the sword strike you twice, even three times. It is a sword for slaughter, a sword of great, for great slaughter, closing in on them from every side. So that hearts melt, may melt with fear, and the fallen be many. I have stationed the sword for slaughter at all their gates. Look, it is forced to strike like lightning. It is grasped for slaughter. Slash to the right, you saw it then to the left. Wherever your blade is turned, I too will strike my hands together, and my wrath will subside. I, the Lord, have spoken. Babylonian is sword. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. Mark out two roads for the sword of the king of Babylon to take, both starting from the same country. Make a signpost where the road branches off to the city. Mark out one road for the sword to come against Rabbath of the Amorites and the other against Judah and fortify Jerusalem. For the king of Babylon will stop at the fork in the road, at the junction of two roads, to seek an omen. He will cast lots with arrows. He will consult his idols. He will examine the liver. To his right hand will come the lot for Jerusalem, where he is set up a battering, set up battering rams to give the command to slaughter, to sound battle cry, to set battling rams against the gates, to build a ramp, and to erect siege works, it will seem like a false omen to those who have sworn allegiance to him, but he will remind them of their guilt and take them captive. Therefore, this is what the sovereign law says. Because you people have brought to mind your guilt by your open rebellion, revealing your sins in all that you do, because you have done this, you will be taken captive. Warning to Zedekiah, you profane and wicked prince of Israel, whose day has come, whose time of punishment has reached its climax. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Take off your turban, remove your crown, for it will not be as it was. Slowly, Lowly will be exalted, and exalted will be brought low. A ruin, a ruin. I will make it a ruin. The crown will not be restored until he whom is rightfully belong shall come. To him I will give it. Amorites shared faith. And you, son of man, prophesy, say this, what the sovereign Lord says about the Amorites and their insults. A sword, a sword, drawn for slaughter, polished to consume, and to flash like lightning. Despite false visions concerning you and lying divinations about you, it will be laid on the necks of the wicked who are to be slain, whose day is come. Those times of punishment has reached its climax. Let the sword return to its sheath in a place where you created. In the land of your ancestry, I will judge you. I will pour out my wrath on you and breathe out my fiery anger against you. I will deliver you to the hands of the brutal men, the men skilled in destruction. You will be a fuel for fire. Your blood will be shed in your land. You will remember no more I, the Lord, have spoken. These are all things that are going to happen in this world because God is going to say enough now. Enumeration of sins. The word of God came to me. Son of man, we judge her. We get the city of bloodshed. Then confront her with all her detestable rights and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. 
Yosida brings herself to him by shedding blood in her mix and defiles herself by making idols. You have become guilty because of the blood you have shed and have become defiled by the idols you have made. You have brought your days to a close and an end of the years to come. Therefore, I will make an object, you an object of scorn to the nations and a laughing stock to all the countries. Those who are near and those who are far away will mock you. You are in this city, full of turmoil. See how each of the princes of Israel, who are in you, uses his power to shed blood. In you, they have treat, treated father and mother with contempt. In you, they have oppressed the foreigner and mistreated the fatherless and the widow. You have despised my holy things and desecrated my Sabbaths. In you are slanderers who bent on shedding blood. In you are those who eat at the mountain shrines and commit good acts. In you are those who dishonor their father's bed, dishonor their father's bed. And you are those who violate women during their period. When they are ceremonially unclean and one man commits a detestable offense with his new wife, another shamefully defiles his daughter's and daughter-in-law, and another violates his sister. His own father's daughter, and you are people who accept bribes to, blood, to shed blood. You take interest and make a profit from the poor. You have sought Augustine from your neighbors, and you will have forgotten me, declares the sovereign Lord. I will surely strike my hands together at the unjust gain you have made and at the blood you have shed in your midst. Will your courage endure or your hands be strong in the day I deal with you? I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. I will disperse you among the nations and scatter you through the countries. Now put an end to your uncleanness when you have been defiled in the eyes of the nations. You will know that I am the Lord. Then the Lord of the me, son of man, the people of Israel have become dross to me. All of them who are, are the copper, tin, iron, and lead left inside a furnace. They are but a dross of silver. Therefore, this is what the sovereign one says. Because you have drawn draw, become dross, I will gather you into Jerusalem, a silver, copper, and iron, lead, and tin, gathered into a furnace, to be melted with a fiery blast, so I will gather you in my anger and my wrath, and put inside the city and melt you. I will gather you and I will go on you with my fiery wrath, and you will be melted inside her. As silver is melted in a furnace, so you will be melted inside her, and you will know that I, the Lord, have pounded out my wrath on you. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the land, you are a land that has not been cleaned or rained on the day, in a day of wrath. There is a conspiracy of her princess within her like a roaring lion, tearing its prey, the devoured people take treasures and precious things. 
and make many windows within her. For priests do violence to my law and proclaim my holy things. They do not distinguish between the holy and the common. They teach that these is teach that there is no difference between the unclean and the clean. And they shut their eyes to the keeping of my Sabbaths, so that I am profaned among them. The visuals within her are like wolves, tearing their prey. They shed blood and kill people to make unjust gain. Her promise what like wash these seeds for them by false visions and lying divinations. They say, this is what the Song of Lord says when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land practice extortion and coming commit robbery. They oppress the poor and needy and mistreat the foreigner, denying them justice. If I looked for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap of behalf of the land so I would not have to destroy it. But uh, if I found no one, so I pour out my wrath on them and consume them with their fiery anger, bringing down their own heads. All they have done declares the sovereign Lord. Heavenly Father, I fall confess the name of Jesus, that the devil has no more power over me. Do not believe in his lives. All to remember, the devil operates power line signs and bake wonders. It's hard for me to read some of this tonight because uh, as he, as we were reading this scripture tonight, I could see how bad this world has become. You know, God has sent all the signs that all we have to do is repent. And there's many people that do not believe and don't care. But as I believe and pray that it's not too late because our day of judgment is coming soon. Not, not that it can't be avoided. It can be. If all this sin that's in the world, <laughs> people could repent from it. That's all that I can say about that. But this is something that tonight I ha I have to read because it's called hope. So you have pain now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. John 16, 22. The joy comes with the presence of the Lord is a joy that cannot be taken away. When we remember what Christ has done for us, we think about his grace as has changed the eternal course of our lives. We cannot be help but be fulfilled with impressible joy. We may struggle on different days, difficult days, but when our lives get hard, to keep sight of the joy of our salvation. But a day is coming when Jesus will return to this earth, setting all things right. And on that day, we will experience a joy in full. Thank you, Jesus, for the joy of my salvation. Thank you that in your presence, I cannot be taken away. My joy cannot be taken away from me. I look forward to the day when I see your face, a face in fullness of joy. Praise be to God. There's always hope coming for us all the time. Tonight's He Holds My Hand is this, Giant Slayers. 
Just as God gave Moses exactly what he needed to accomplish great things, he will equip us in the same way. If he calls us to slay giants, we will, he will make us into giant slayers. And this is what God has to say. I identify the giants in your life. Sometimes they come in the form of mental attacks. You second guess your decisions. You feel anxious and fearful. Your exhaustion leads you to insecurity and hesitancy. You feel like there's no way to succeed in life. Other times the giants come from in form of physical attacks. Huh, I know about that one. Illness, headaches, surgeries, bad diseases, deliberate and arthritis. And some days people come after you with criticism, lies and accusations, looming like oversized threats to your happiness and well-being. The fierce giants come from the form of spiritual attacks. Believe me, I know that. Causing you to question your faith in the wake of hardship and loss. To become a giant slayer, come to me in prayer. Into the holy heavenly war room where Jesus intercedes for you. Hebrews 7, 25. Ignore criticism and keep living for me in accordance to my word. Remember past victor victories and the times I shrunk your giants and help you defeat them. Amen to that, brother. Sometimes you see your problems as bigger than they really are. Ask me for clarity in your thinking. Then face your giants with controlled strength, relying on me for the appropriate words or necessary courage. Be totally dependent upon me and expect victory. Humanly speaking, it's impossible. But this is, but with God, everything is possible. Matthew 19, 26. That's one saying that you can, you can really memorize. Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Praise be to God, which is true. With God, everything is possible. That's one right. way I, that's right. One way, or the, one way or the other. You know, it, all you have to do is just have the faith, no matter how bad things get. Ah, sometimes we waver a little bit. Right now, it's like pouring cats and dogs here in Nashville, New Hampshire. The real bad rains are coming. I guess there's flood warnings and all kinds of things. We'll just pray that things get, get better, that nobody gets hurt. We don't know why these rains are coming all the time. I find it like really, really, uh, for the past year or so, we have less, uh, in that, in that, in a Hampshire and certain areas, we have less sunshine and more rain. It seems like somebody took the earth and just whacked it on the side and moved it somehow. I don't know why everybody's not seeing this, but I am. You know, when the government messes with our, our environment, you never know what they're gonna do to destroy it. So we take one day at a time, we see what it's gonna do. And then one day God's gonna say, okay, I've had enough. And then you're gonna see God's mighty wrath come down. And the good and the bad will all have to share in it. So, what can we do about this? We can keep on praying no matter what. Every night I ask you, don't you hear Jesus whispering your name? And I ask you to take, to open that door of your heart to him. So that he can give you the strength to get through what we're going to have to get through. This is just the beginning. But when you have Jesus with you, 
it makes it easier. Just like it made it a little bit easier for my illness. Was I concerned? Quite a bit. But God gave me peace. And I'm taking one day at a time. And I'm sort of getting back my strength one day at a time. Because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That alone is a miracle. To believe and to trust. Never really trusted anybody because of circumstances in my life. But when I started trusting God 100%, my whole life changed. So as I live one day at a time, I don't worry about tomorrow because it might not come. Sometimes I plan for a trip or something like that, but not much. I just wait and see what God has in store for me each and every day. So may God bless you and keep you, and may his light shine upon you tonight. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, to take care of yourselves. Good night and amen.